First and foremost, let me officially welcome you to Atlanta and the 14th head coach of the Atlanta Hawks, Nate McMillan. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Good to see you. <laughs> it's great to see you. You know, we've, we've seen each other on Zoom for way too long. It's nice to see you in person. You know, this week, Nate, we've heard from Travis, we've heard from Tony in their season enders, and they told us the backstory of how they were convinced you were the right man for the job and was waiting for the run. Uh, I mean, really, it was at the end. You know, uh, it was just so much focus on finishing this season. Uh, when I took over and, uh, you know, uh, Tony and Travis gave me the opportunity to, uh, you know, take the team over and, and coach this team, uh, you know, what they wanted at that time was uh, this team to play better. They felt that uh, uh, we were better than what we were showing out on the floor. Um, and they wanted to see us play better basketball. Uh, so that was really the conversation that we had uh, at that time uh, that we want to see these guys play better basketball. And it was never anything about, you know, at the end of the season, we'll talk about a contract. Uh, it was just focusing on uh, finishing this season. And that's where my, my mind was at, was focusing on finishing the season. Uh, we was able to get off to a really good start, win games and, you know, get into the playoff run and, and eventually uh, finish fifth uh, uh, in the East and, you know, have continue to have that su success uh, throughout the playoffs. So it never ended. You know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people were thinking that maybe it would end uh, a lot sooner, but it never ended for us. So really, I didn't think about um, really the future until it was over. And uh, we had accomplished our goal uh, of getting to the playoff, uh, you know, when I uh, first uh, came down and signed on uh, with Coach Pierce, the plan was to try to take this team to the next level uh, and be competitive and get to the playoffs. And we had accomplished that. Um, so at the end of the season, when it was all said and done, uh, thought about it, didn't have a lot to think about. A uh, great group of guys. Uh, a lot of potential here, and um, it was really, uh, I mean, really not a, a, a no-brainer in the sense that I felt the chemistry with the group. Uh, I like the direction uh, that the organization is going in, um, and it's like, okay, let's, let's get this done. And, and, and both, both of us wanted to uh, get it done, and uh, Tony and uh, Jamie and, and Travis, uh, you know, really, it was really smooth uh, uh, transition to get this contract done. First time in your illustrious career as a player and a coach, you've been this close to home, mm -hmm. to North Carolina. Did that figure in to your decision? I've always loved Atlanta. You know, when I when I played, uh, my family would of course uh, come down. And uh, they did come down during these playoffs. Uh, you know, my wife uh, you know, ha got to the point where she said, listen, you know, we're, um, uh, the organization gave me a number of, of, of tickets, but that wasn't enough. I had to still buy <laughs> some tickets because every round it was more and more family members coming down and the prices were going higher and higher. So it, 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 it was a bittersweet moment in the sense that, okay, uh, now we were in the Eastern Conference Finals and uh, looked at the ticket prices and it was like, and we were sold out. And um, I had to purchase a few more tickets and my wife said, okay, okay enough is enough. Um, so being close to home, you know, uh, it's great. Uh, but Atlanta has always been uh, a place that I've enjoyed coming to uh, and playing. And, um, you know, even when, when, when the Neek, the human highlight uh, film was, was playing here, uh, it's just a great place to play. Speaking of Raleigh, for those that don't know, Nate what, played at NC State for a couple of years after you know, being at Shawan, and your head college coach was Jimmy Valvano. Yeah. Uh, 
Talk a little bit about Jimmy V and his influence on your life. Oh, uh, great man. Um, uh, I really enjoyed. He was really the first player coach. You know, they, they, they call him player coach. And uh, I think a, a player's coach is a guy that uh, he keeps it fun, uh, keeps it loose. You enjoy playing for, uh, you know, that guy. And uh, Coach V was that type of man. You know, I don't think he got a lot of credit for his X's and O's, um, you know, because he was always, you know, in the media talking and and uh, entertaining. Uh, but he was he was a really good uh, a coach that, you know, came up with, uh, you know, game plans and strategies as far as, uh, you know, defensively, you know, boxing one, uh, diamond and two. Uh, we had a number of different defenses that uh, we played. Uh, you know, offensively, uh, he wanted us to to run, uh, but he was. I mean, he he was this type of coach. We would come in um, some days, and you know, he had friends all over the country, and you know, sometimes uh, you know some of these uh, VIPs would come in, and coach would be sitting on the on the sidelines with his stogie, his cigar. <laughs> he would tell us to pick teams, and that was practice. It was like he was that loose. <laughs> That he would sit over and have a conversation with his friend and smoke a cigar, and um, our practices were open, you know, so our the student body could come in as long as they sat in the uh, upper bowl and watch practice. So he was he was really uh, uh, a good man to to work for, and um, we had a lot of success when I played for him. Nate, the Hawks' turnaround was so dramatic uh, to make the run that they made what did you notice what was there was there a moment or a series of events that you saw this thing turn around like it did well you know when uh when it first happened um and i got the the job really uh, you know I, I i just told the team um you know my message to the team was we all have to be better uh you have to be better uh, I have to be better. The coaching staff, we all must be better. Uh, you know, Coach Pierce took the hit uh, because we wasn't playing well. Um, and I've been in that situation before where a head coach has let go. And, um, you know, now it's on the team to respond. And my challenge to those guys is we all have to be better. We need to be better. We're going to be better. And we got off to, a, I mean, a good start. I mean, I think we, our first eight games we won. Our first eight games, so I kind of I, I felt then that they that stretch where we won eight in a row, uh, I felt they knew that if they played the game the right way, if they commit and they sacrifice uh, to each other, uh, you know, we talk about trust, uh, we talk about being connected. Uh, you play the game the right way, you play the game together. You don't get caught up in stats and numbers. And that's a real challenge when you have a young team because all of these young guys are they're trying to establish themselves. You know, so numbers are important. You know, you're in the, you know, we got a lot of guys that that are still in their first contract. And you you're trying to establish yourself. So uh numbers, minutes, all of that uh is really important uh to those guys and uh, a lot of times it's a little hard to sacrifice. And, and, and do some of those things uh, that's necessary for uh, a team to win. But they did. And they ended up winning eight games in a row. And it showed them right away that um, if you do that, you'll give yourself a chance to win. And they committed to that. You continue to see the growth. Uh, you continue to see wins uh, come. Uh, they, you know, they, we got better in the fourth quarter. Uh, the first part of the season, we lost a lot of games. We were leading uh, going into the fourth quarter or, you know, not far behind. And we would end up dropping a lot of those games. Uh, we started to understand how to play in the fourth quarter, how to finish games and how to win games. And uh, they just continued to get better. And they found themselves uh, continuing to stay with that sacrifice, the commitment, uh, I never questioned their effort, uh, but it was like when you're trying to take that next step as a young team, you have to learn how to win. And uh, they did, and uh, they ended up uh, 
having a, a real successful season. You mentioned your family. Uh, your son, Jamel, NBA assistant coach, is 25 years old. The group, the core group, is younger than that. These guys are 20, 22, 23 years old. How did you bridge the generational gap with this group that had never had success before? You don't, you can't force it on these, you know, young people. Uh, you just can't force them into a corner and say, this is how you're going to do it. it. It really doesn't work that way. Uh, you have to work with them and you have to, com you have to listen. Uh, and, you know, as, as I said to Trey, uh, you know, and, and uh, really Trey, because he's that point guard. He's the guy that's going to re really uh, lead us, and he has to be that extension uh, of me out on the floor uh, and, and, and get these guys to play uh, how we uh, – or establish the style of play that we need to be successful on the floor. Uh, but as I told him, it's a partnership. I'm working with you. we got to work together. You know, and uh, I'm, you know, uh, you you need to listen to me, and open up and and allow yourself to be coached. But I also have to listen to you. And you know, it, uh, we we were talking about, you know, we we talk about this all the time in our film sessions. And you know, one of the things I said to him, uh, because always people are always calling me old school, and <laughs> I and I am, I, I'm, I'm old, <laughs> As, you know, so I, I bring the old school with me. But, you know, I, I uh, really went back to a movie that uh, I asked him had he ever seen Drumline, a movie that was filmed here. And, and, and uh, he's like, of course I've seen Drumline. And I said, um, you remember when the director, uh, when they were coming up with their last performance, uh, the director was old school. All he did was... He wanted old school, school music and, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, their routines and everything that they were doing was really kind of old. But he had this, this new drummer that was, you know, this guy was, he was Trey Young. You know, new school, you know, had it. And what I, what I told Trey was, listen, we got to find a way to mix the old school with the new school. And that's what they did in the movie. They gave them a little old school, gave them a little new school. And what I meant by that was Trey plays the game at a tempo that many can't play. Yeah, he, that's a, he's a very special player. And, but he was playing every quarter, I thought, the same way. The first quarter looked like the fourth quarter. And in the fourth quarter, you gotta, conditions change you know, as far as um, where the game is at. You're going to either be up, down, close. Uh, so you have to adapt to those conditions. And those were the things that I thought he showed a lot of growth uh, in managing the game in the fourth quarter, slowing it down, uh, giving him a little old school, getting set up, getting organized, and not just playing at one pace or one tempo. And... Uh, but still bringing your, your game, you know, uh, to that fourth quarter. And I thought he'd really, I mean, we, we, we really don't get here uh, or get this far if he does not make that type of adjustment and, uh, you know, mix a little old school with his new school. So uh, uh, you, you, you have to just really be patient and work with these guys. And, and, and you can't, but you can't force it on them um, as they used to do um, back in the day. Okay, Sarge. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. One, one last question before we open it up. Uh, you, you talked about keeping an eye on the Hawks through the Neek years, and obviously as a player and coach, you've been coming to Atlanta forever. But your reaction to what you saw in the stands with the fans, uh, finally got him back in the building for the playoffs, and it seemed to us that they were your sixth man out there. It was great. I mean, it was it was it was really, but everywhere it wasn't just uh, in the stadium, you know. To um, you know, and I tell our guys to block out the noise, you know, and and what I mean by that, you can't 
you know, even when it, you're, good things are happening, you, you need to block that out too. Um, and to stay focused on what uh, the plan is. Uh, but you, we couldn't go anywhere. I mean, the local news was talking about us constantly, all day, every, you know, every day. Um, to see that the, the, the building was sold out was great, you know. And I played, I think we played our last game here when I was in Indiana um, last year. And it was a, it was a rocking crowd. It was a close game. And, uh, but the, I mean, the building was, 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 was live. And, um, but during the playoffs, um, it was, it was just, it was just in, incredible. My, my, my family, my older brother, uh, who observes everything, um, came down for every game and he was just amazed at, you know, the, just everything, you know, he was talking about the concourse and, you know, the people that he was seeing and his standing room only and, you know, how, uh, uh, you know, so everybody was into the game and, you know, they were there at the start, you know, they weren't, I think in, in the past, uh, the fan base here arrives a little late, uh, but they, they weren't arriving like they were in and ready to, uh, to go from the start. So the experience, you know, and, and for us on, 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 on the uh, floor, the players and myself, great atmosphere. Uh, and, you know, uh, that was another challenge for me was to, for our guys to make our building a tough place for opponents to come in and get wins. And uh, we have to give our fan base something to cheer for. And they did. I thought the guys did. Uh, we became a, a very tough team uh, to, to, to win uh, in our building, on our floor. And, uh, you know, we want to always uh, be that type of team that when you come here to play, uh, it's going to be a tough night for you. And uh, those guys did that. It was electric. Yeah. It no was doubt great. about it. It was great. We'll open it up for questions. Uh, our our talented assistants, Karen and John, will bring the microphone to you. Hey, Nate. Good hey. to see you. How you doing? I know you spoke about uh, how good it is to be close to family, but what are the biggest reasons you decided to take this job, and what makes it a good fit for you? The, the biggest reason is uh, Tony, uh, Tony, Jamie, and uh, Travis. You know what they are trying to build here. When I first came here, uh, I wasn't, you know, the assistant. And uh, I wasn't getting everything far as the plan, uh, but uh, we did have several conversations, uh, you know, and talking to Coach Pierce, you know, the direction the organization wanted to go. And um, I wanted to be on board at that time, too. And as I um, took over, then I started to get more information on uh, – the plan here and the direction uh, that the organization uh, they want to go. And, and Tony uh, will do whatever it takes to uh, bring a winning team here and a team that, uh, you know, character, all of that plays a part uh, in um, what he wants to uh, bring to Atlanta. And, uh, you know, Travis, you know, talking about, you know, watching Travis last year, I thought Travis did a really uh, good job um, last year. And they were, they wanted to take that next step. So you had to go out and get some free agents and to bring in Bogey, to bring in Gallinari, to bring in a Rondo. Uh, and at that, you know, I think before I signed, we didn't have those players, uh, but the talk was that they wanted to add some veterans to the roster that could help them take the next step. And Travis goes out and he signs those guys. He brings in a Solomon Hill. Um, he brings in a Tony Snell, a, you know, a Chris Dunn. And you add those veterans like that to a young roster and you get pretty much what you got uh, this season. So. And when you're when you're signing on with a team 
me personally, uh, it's all, all about ownership. It really is. Because if, if you can't be on the same page with what they are doing or what they, the expectations, then it's going to be a short, uh, uh, you know, time here. And, um, you know, listening to them over the course of the year and then as we talked about it when we were negotiating the contract, uh, I'm on board. I believe uh, in this organization. I believe in what they want to do. I feel that I can help them accomplish uh, those goals. But you have, you have an owner uh, that is uh, willing to step up and make it better, not just uh, for this organization, but he t for the city, you know, and, and, and you could, you could feel, you, you could feel his energy when he speaks to you, uh, how passionate, uh, both he and Jamie are about, uh, you know, making the Hawks a legit organization in the NBA, but also, uh, the city of Atlanta. Coach, congratulations on you. getting officially the, the official title of head coach. I want to go back to what you said about ownership. With Tony Ressler, he said earlier this week that getting the interim tag removed wasn't just about your experience, but it was really about your evolution and being able to adjust your style based on who you're coaching. And you alluded to that a little bit earlier as well. And he said the fact that you were able to adjust was the most impressive. But what have those adjustments actually been for you with this team maybe versus other teams you've coached? I mean, it's just part of the job, you know, really as coaches, we have to adjust, we have to adapt um, to uh, situations um, and that, that, that's constant, you know, it's just part of what we have to do. Uh, and you, you, what I try to do is prepare the team uh, for that, you know, the fact that you, you just don't know, you expect injuries, but you, you don't expect, you know, as many injuries as we had, uh, you know, some nights uh, you're going into the game, you, as Trey was the last couple games, uh, you know, some people thought we was lying, you know, about his availability, but basically he went up to game time trying to prepare, trying to get into that game or play in that game. And, you know, he's back on the back court working out. And you don't know until 40 minutes before uh, the game starts that, okay, he can't go. He comes upstairs, you know, and uh, I can't go, can't shift or I can't cut. So now you have to adjust, okay, now you run downstairs. Lou, you're starting, man. Okay, you know, this, these are the sets that we're running. So you, you're making those adjustments. You know, guys get in foul trouble. Uh, you know, the, the fact that we lost uh, DeAndre for a big portion of the season and he was playing – probably the best basketball uh, of any of our guys at the start of the season, really start to find his rhythm, and all of a sudden he's gone. And he's a big part of this team and, and what you want to do or you try to do out on the floor. Then you lose Cam. Uh, and, and, you know, throughout the, the, uh, the season, you know, guys are continuing to go down, you know, so – Adjustments, uh, adapting is, is what you, uh, you know, it's, it's like my, uh, you know, my, my mother used to say, look, these are all the ingre ingredients I have. I got to work with what I have. And, uh, you know, that's the approach, you know, that the NBA is not going to feel sorry for you, uh, that these guys are out. You got to find a way to uh, get those guys to perform and, uh, you know, leave everything out on the floor. So I have to give a lot of credit to the coaching staff. Uh, I, thought, I think the coaching staff did a great job. You, things like this doesn't happen if the coaching staff and a lot of people behind the scene are not uh, doing their job. You know, so, I mean, this is, this is the organization uh, that has been successful. It's not just the Hawks players and Nate McMillan. 
um, you know, our training staff, our coaches, you know, all of these folks that uh, you, a lot of times you don't see. Uh, they're doing work that uh, is keeping those guys ready, is getting those guys ready. You know, Solomon Hill steps out, performs uh, when Dre goes down. Um, Tony Snell comes in, plays well. Brandon comes in, plays well. Uh, even one of our, you know, our two ways, Nate and Skyler, uh, had their moments uh, where they really helped us. And that is a credit to uh, our staff, you know, our training staff, our coaches, assistant coaches, uh, keeping those guys, getting those guys ready, keeping them ready, and then the players taking advantage of that opportunity when they get it. And speaking of success with the organization, if I read correctly, you received a letter from Lenny Wilkins just after taking over as interim coach for the Sonics back in 2000. So have you thought about sort of that full circle moment? It's now with him being a former Hawks head coach and, and now you taking over officially? Uh, uh, Lenny is a really good friend. Um, and, you know, and, and another coach that, uh, who coached the Hawks, who wrote me a letter, uh, Coach Fratello, um, you know, and, you know, I, I didn't even really know those. I knew Lenny, but Coach Fratello, just as a player, I played against him. Uh, but they really became really good friends, and really the letter was uh, just simple, uh, teach what you know. And I thought that uh, just that line was uh, probably the most important thing. You can't go out here and try to be somebody you're not. And I take a little bit from, I think, all of my coaches uh, that I played for, uh, even back to uh, college and high school. Um, I, I take a little bit from all of those guys. Um, I had great coaches uh, from Little League on up uh, to uh, college and to the professional level. And um, that was his, his message, though, teach what you know. And, and I, I, that was crystal clear uh, to me. And uh, that's what I've tried to do. Uh, when I took over in Seattle, I was only on the bench a year. So I really didn't have that opportunity to kind of grow and learn uh, from a lot of coaches, uh, you know, being an assistant. You know, within a year, I'm coaching uh, some of the guys that I played with, Gary Payton was one of them. And it was like, you know, the weirdest thing that, uh, you know, me and this guy was, we was just hanging out together. And now, now all of a sudden, you know, I'm telling them to get on the line. And, uh, you know, so, uh, but, uh, you know, Coach Wilkins and uh, Coach Fratello, I mean, good men, uh, very successful coaches and, uh, uh it was great to, to, to get those letters from those guys. Good to see you in 3D. Yeah. Um, John Collins told us uh, during the playoffs again, repeating what he had said earlier, that he wants to remain with, with this team. But uh, you've got, uh, at some point, the team's going to have to make a business decision when it comes to, to matching a contract offer. Um, can you talk to the difficulty and the challenge of keeping a young team together as these decisions come up in the future? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, it's tough. Uh, I love John, and I love what he has, he, he did for us uh, this season. You know, I was talking to someone just uh, recently about I didn't have re distractions this season from our guys. And, and what I meant by that, I never thought about John's contract. You know, it never became an issue that John was playing for a contract. Um, you know, I knew that early. You know, that he, uh, his extension, uh, like we could give him an extension, but I never got that from John because he came in every day and he worked. He didn't pout. He came in with his smile and his sp that, that good spirit that he brings uh, to the building uh, every day, every night, and he played. Uh, so I never thought about uh, his contract. Uh, at all, uh, but when you're trying, as, as I said earlier, you know, one of the difficult things I think for an organization is when you are developing a team and all of these guys are growing up at the same time, 
you know, trying to keep them together uh, is, 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 is tough. And, um, you know, I, I, again, Tony and, and Travis, they're going to they're gonna do uh, what's best uh, for the organization, uh, uh, for the team, and for the player. You know, I think they're they're, they're going to be fair. They're going to they're going to uh, try to do all they can to keep uh, the situation that they have uh, intact in place. And um, but it is a business, and uh, you know that's the one thing that I have learned uh, that going from a player to you know seeing some of the things that happen. Uh, on the management side, uh, you understand both sides, you know. And but I, I, I as I said before, uh, this organization is committed to doing the right thing, and uh, you know they're going to do that. Hey Nate, hey, um, Chris. what improvements do you feel like this team needs to make in order to take that next step? Oh. I mean, I thought, I thought what we, we – first, I think stay healthy is one. Um, you know, we're going to uh, – uh, Travis and I and, and Tony and, and, and the coaches, they, basically they've told me, look, take some time off. So we haven't even talked about that. And we will talk about that because the draft is coming up and then free agency is coming up. And we're going to – when we get together – uh, look back on what was good, what was bad, uh, our strength, our weaknesses, and um, we're going to try to address those issues. But uh, I thought, you know, we uh, we were solid this year, and uh, you know, we it got overpowered um, against Milwaukee. Uh, they, I think, I thought they was really, they were physical, uh, and but we've been physical too. I mean, the two series that we uh, that we came out of were just as physical. New York and Philadelphia. I mean, they were big, uh, they were physical, and we, we were able to win the, both of those. Uh, so, you know, I like our group, and uh, that's something that we're, I'm sure we're going to be talking about real soon. Hey, Nate. Um Obviously, you guys making the Eastern Conference Finals, it raises expectations for next year. Absolutely. Uh, just what do you envision for, for next season? But also, how do you kind of manage those expectations if it puts pressure on the guys or you or the franchise as well? I, I really don't. Uh, a lot of things have to go right. You've got to be lucky. Uh, you need a little luck when you have runs like we had this year. And, um, you know, things just for whatever reason, um, uh, went right. And uh, we had a lot of success. Uh, we know the expectations are going to be uh, higher uh, for, for us next season. But the one thing we've tried to keep this team locked in on is just us. Again, not the outside noise uh, and what people are saying we should be or shouldn't be. Because at, be at the beginning of the, the season, they weren't saying, what they're saying now about us. So can't focus on that. Uh, I always approach it one game at a time. I don't, because you just, you know, even though we had a lot of injuries, uh, a lot of times when you have injuries such as we did this season, uh, you don't have this type of season um, because you just, it just doesn't happen that way. Um, you need those guys to be healthy, but I think in some kind of weird way, it may have been somewhat of a blessing, you know, because uh, with all the injuries that we had, it allowed some other guys to play and be used and develop. And we had minutes for them. We had a lot of minutes for guys, you know, so they could they could get out there and play and. And, and, and the guys that we were bringing in were able to slide right in and fit in, and uh, we were able to have success. You know, you just you kind of you, you kind of think that uh, 
if we were healthy the entire season, uh, there's a lot of guys. It's not a lot of minutes. And again, you're talking about a young team that are still, these guys are still trying to establish themselves. Trey, Sean Collins, DeAndre, Radish, those guys are trying to establish themselves. So they want time, they want minutes, uh, they want touches, they want attempts. And uh, we really didn't have that because we had minutes for guys this year. So, um, you know, next year is, is going to be about just to, taking it one, one, day at to, one day at a time, one game at a time. And, you know, you, you know of course, you guys were right. We should be uh, division champions again, and, and we should be in the finals next year and all of that. Um, a lot has to go right for that to happen. And the focus for us is to just to prepare that team to be better and get better each, each and every day. One in the back, Coach. You guys talked about believing in yourselves all season long. And I'm curious if there was like a moment that not only you envisioned how far this team could go this season, but you envisioned yourself or hoped that you could be a part of that run long term. Yeah, well, it's just something that I think it was, it was, uh, it was needed for this team. Uh, because we had gotten off to somewhat of a slow start. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about the playoffs. And, uh, you know, most of them had never experienced that and didn't know what it would take to uh, accomplish that goal. So, but it's, it's basically you are giving them a vision and you're giving them a plan, and then you're, you're trying to give them that roadmap on how we're going to get there. You know, so the belief is the, the first part, that you gotta believe that this could happen, and, uh, but how is it gonna happen? And these are the things we need to do to make it happen. Uh, and then we went eight games in a row, and it's like, Okay, we may have something here. And you just try to build off of that. And uh, it was some, something that, you know, we talked about believing, but we always talked about the fist. You know, we, we, we talked about the fist and a tight fist. You know, and the tighter the five that are out there on the floor, uh, you, you know, the, the, the better chance or the easier it is for you to knock somebody out. You know, you can't punch, you don't punch like this. You know, you punch like this. And, you know, so those two things that we, we talked about, I really believe in. And, uh, you know, this is something that, you know, the fist uh, is something that uh, when working with Coach K, uh, uh, we, 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 we talked about that uh, with the Olympic team and how connected, because you had all, the, all of that talent, but talent is just talent if you're not connected. And uh, I really believe in that. I really believe that, you know, the five guys, doesn't make a difference to five that are out there, but the five that are out there, if you're playing as one and you're tightly connected, are uh, you gonna give yourself a chance to win? So that was something that, that stuck. And uh, they started to believe, they started to understand the connection they needed out on the floor. And we started to win games. And anytime you win games and you're winning games consistently, uh, then they can't, they can't argue that. You know, they can't question uh, that. And uh, our guys continue to believe uh, and uh, continue to, to work together and, and get tighter. And they accomplish some things that uh, – surprised a lot of people this year. You mentioned before how you like this group. What specifically do you like about them and their potential and what they can accomplish in this league? I like their potential. I, I like, I, I like, and you know, I just start with Trey. Uh, I think Trey has something special uh, that uh, I haven't seen. Uh, and uh, he 
you know, the postseason uh, is a time that he could really shine. Uh, there's a lot of growth that's still needed. And, um, uh, but his, you know, the, his talent, his skill uh, is something that you need to uh, have success. And he has it. Uh, you got you got young guys in in uh, Dre and and um, Cam that are and, and and John. You know those are young, athletic uh, talent that you need. You need. I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at Phoenix team and 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 and, and the talent that they have and uh, the length that they have, how big they are. You know, I, I looked at, I only saw it a few times, but you, uh, you, when you look at Cam and, and, uh, and Dre and John on the floor at the same time, uh, that's, a, that's a nice looking young group. Uh, Kevin and Bogey, uh, shooters that you need. <laughs> you know, I thought, I thought Kevin had a, a, a really, uh, really good season this year for me. Um, and uh, because just listening to some of the things that were said that uh, we, they, they wanted from him, I think we, I think we got that uh, this year because there were so many injuries. Kevin had to become, you know, because we didn't have Cam and Dre, so Kevin had to become not only a score, a guy who plays with the ball, but a guy who we got to put on the best offensive player. So he became a better defender, a better two-way guy. Uh, Bogey, uh, uh, his ability to shoot the ball, you need that. You know, so can, I mean, uh, Clint and, and Big O, uh, Oyeka, I mean, those, that's, that's a really good, young, talented team. Uh, so all of that impressed me. And, and with that type of potential uh, and what I saw from these guys, these guys – they want to, they want to win, and they got a taste of it. Uh, so now we have to go into this off season and improve. But uh, I think those guys believe in uh, what we're trying to do here, and each other. And you know, I, it's to me it, it's kind of similar to Phoenix in the bubble last year. You know, they go eight and zero in that bubble. And they got a taste of success and believing and, um, you know, playing the game the right way. And, uh, you know, Coach Monty uh, has given them direction. And they that run is still going on. You know, so I, I see that type of potential and that type of belief with this group. Kevin? The NBA schedule is always brutal, more so this past year. A few days after you took over, you got an all-star break. What was that all-star break like for you in trying to get ready for what you had left this season? <laughs> to try to get some rest, it was, it, it was brutal. And it was brutal on these players. Um, you know, I, I, you know, just my past experience playing in, in, in the league really helped me. And uh, because... I, as I told the coaches a few times, I know if I'm feeling tired, <laughs> what those guys are feeling like. So we really didn't practice. Uh, we couldn't practice. Our guys, uh, you know, constantly talking with our trainers about uh, where the guys were at. And, you know, we, we went to basically teaching through film. So a lot of our teaching was in the film room. We're out here because we couldn't even go in the film room. Uh, we couldn't be that close. So we, we put a big screen right on the wall right there. And we spread out the chairs uh, because the NBA made us do that. And a lot of our film sessions were out here uh, teaching. So it was a real challenge. It was a real challenge for me because now I'm taking over in the middle of the season. And you can't change much. Um, uh, you know, so really relied on the, the our system coaches. Uh, we we pretty much stayed with the same system. 
that was put in by Coach Pierce. And we slowly start to adjust and add some things uh, to what we were doing and so that I could, you know, I could feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh, but uh, it was a, it was a unbelievable challenge, you know, for these guys. Uh, you test it twice a day. Um, you can't you can't go anywhere. You can't you you can't have family come to see you. Uh, you're playing in empty arenas, you know. So uh, really a challenge uh, this year. But I mean, the NBA pulled it off, and I thought I think the players pulled it off. Uh, it was competitive. Um, uh, they were good games. And, uh, you know, when the fan base was able to come back, uh, that made it even better. You describe yourself as old, and I'll respectfully disagree, but uh, since you said that and since you had expressed some initial reluctance when offered the interim job, can I ask, uh, have you, can you share anything about your long-term plans and how long would you like to see in a perfect world this go for you? Uh, a, a lot of when I when I was let go last year with Indiana uh, that was like it was it was it was a shock to say the least um, and immediately after that I just said that look I'm taking a year off and I'm I want to I want to I need to get away and, and the reason for that is because I don't I put everything I have into uh, who I'm working for and my 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 players, uh, the organization. I'm totally. I got both feet in. And uh, when that happened, it was like I need to just take some time and think about: Do I want to continue to do this? And you basically what basically what I was saying was I was really looking for this organization because. You just you just need to be on the same page um, with what your plan uh, is, and I I thought that we were, but uh, found out that we were not, and um, so my I put that out there that I was going to take a year off and didn't know what I was going to do, and a lot of people thought that I was just uh, done with coaching. And uh, I wasn't done with coaching. I was done with some other things. Uh, but uh, when Coach Pierce came down to uh, talk to me about coming to help him uh, and in an assistant role, uh, I accepted that because I knew exactly where he was uh, in trying to take a young or young team, young organization to the next level and make them competitive. And uh, we talked a couple times and decided to, uh, to do that and be, in, be an assistant and, and not be in the light. You know, I don't have to be out here and, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> answer the question. I could just coach. You know, and that was cool. And you're going to be with a young group. Uh, it, that, 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 that worked for me. And, and, and it, you know, it took me some time. I had watched one too many episodes of, uh, uh, and what was it, Jeopardy? I was watching and uh, Family Feud. I really, I found myself on the, on the, uh, in the living room watching those shows at night and saying, I'm, I can't do this for a year. I really can't. That's for real. That's a true story. I love Family Feud. My wife is a big Jeopardy. Uh, but, but it was like, there's no way this is how my day is going to go. Every day I'm sitting in the house, you know, and it was like, okay, um, I think I'll take you up on that. And, uh, you know, so, you know, once I came down and then, you know, some things happened that, you know, n no one anticipated. And 
back on the sidelines and now you're back on the, on the sidelines and you're coaching, which is what I love. I love it. Uh, I love working with, with uh, the players, uh, the coaches, um, and when, and, and, and it's, it's, it's even better, <laughs> you know, when you have a chance to win some games, you know, and, uh, you know, so all of that came about this season where, you know, I'm back on the sidelines, didn't expect it, but here I am and, uh, we're competitive and, uh, you know, I like this, I like this group. You know, so uh, things is just it's it's a it's it's just a it's it's really a blessing. It's really a blessing. Um, and as I've said, um, you know, sometimes you know one door closes and another door will open, and uh, uh, it's just I mean it, it's really it's weird when you kind of think about all that has happened with me and Coach Piers. You know, he's now in Indiana, and uh, I'm here in Atlanta. And, uh, you know, it's just I have no way of explaining that. Other question? So, Coach, you mentioned being on the same page. I know you haven't had a lot of time to maybe have this conversation with Travis Schlink, but we are a few weeks away, of course, from the draft as well as free agency. So I'm just going to ask in terms of your philosophy, 1A and 1B. From the draft perspective, are you more of a guy who believes in best player available or fit or, and then from the free agency perspective, if you had a wish list, what would that wish list be? I believe, you know, that I just left my, my time was a few weeks ago. In a couple of weeks, it's Travis time. And it's our scouts time. And, you know, they, I, I, I've always been involved as much as they want to allow me. But uh, I don't, those guys are out scouting these players all season long for years. And uh, to have someone like myself come in and just say, take that guy. I don't have the, you know, I don't have the, the, the uh, uh, I haven't done the work on on that, you know. So really, when I what I've done with uh, with the draft of uh, of or being involved in the draft, you know, the GMs and the scouts, they've done their work. They they give me. I watch a little film on these guys, and they'll tell me, uh, you know, the group that they have and that they're looking at. Um, Travis knows our needs. Our scouts, they know our needs. And uh, this is something that is not just, it starts now. They've been, they knew that before the start of the season. So they've gone out and scouted all these positions, all these players, and they have a list of who they, they want. So uh, really, the draft, how much am I, how much will I be involved in making, I don't make the decision. And I would never uh, do that because that's not my hat. I, that's, you know, um, um, you know, that's what Travis does and that's uh, what our scouts are there for. And uh, they do their due diligence on these guys and find out the background and, you know, they know what type of player that uh, Travis and Tony wants for this organization. And they'll go out and select them. And then when they, when they bring them to me, then I have to coach them up. You know, so uh, it was like Big O. Big O, Big o is, he, he was, he, every game he improved. And his minutes continued to just go up. And... Uh, he was solid for us to the point that we were, you know, uh, I was, I was, you know, really concerned putting him up against a big Embiid and a Lopez, but he held his own against uh, both of those players. And, uh, you know, so that's my job is once they get here, you develop them, you coach them up. But 
far as the scouting um, and the draft, uh, I'll get asked some questions and I'll look at some film, of course, on the, our guys. You know, free agency, probably a little bit more involved in that. Uh, but still, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, as an organization, the one thing that Tony has said is he wants everybody's input. Uh, but the final decision, of course, is going to be uh, in that it's going to be Tony and Travis uh, decision on uh, what they who they select and who they bring in. And it's just like it's my decision on who subs, who I sub in and sub out, who is playing in the fourth quarter. Uh, that's my time. You know, this offseason is their time. Thank you all for your questions. That was great. Coach, officially, we welcome you, you to Atlanta. You know that beautiful MLK court that we have and that mosaic at midcourt? You're part of that now. Yes, yes. You're a big part of our city and, and what makes this city great. So we welcome you to the Hawks. We welcome you to Atlanta. We can't wait to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Mark. Nate McMillan, everybody.